All right, now for episode seven, part seven, of how to add a second region <coughs> to your grid. So uh, we're just going to shut down the welcome real quick because what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that folder since it's already set up. We don't really have to do anything. Just change the port number um, and that's it. And if you want to use separate databases, you can do that too. But well, we'll go ahead and uh, go to the tutorial. We're going to take this welcome center. And I'm going to copy the bin. I'm make a new uh, folder. I'm going to call this "Use Me to to Set Up." So I'll just this will be like a, a, a master file. So so we'll, get, we'll copy that, and we're going to make a new one. We're going to call this a sandbox because we want a sandbox in our grid. So let's paste that bin folder in here. Now we can go ahead and restart the Welcome Center now because we're done copying it. So need to worry about that. Uh, we could add a sandbox to the welcome center but I suggest leaving your welcome center on its own instance uh, because it gets usually higher traffic than other regions and a sandbox of course if people have used the resources you don't want to share that with your, your welcome center so just kind of leave them separate. So now we have the bin. Um, first thing let's do is we'll go ahead and change the region. Um, so just right click in region. So this is the welcome region name. So we'll just go ahead and go sandbox. Um, you can use a website called GUI Generator, um, which are uh, UUI uh, I, uh, G U U I D Generator rather, uh, and you're going to see it right here. They changed it. Oh, this is a different. It's got to be a different one. There it is here. Uh, OnlineGUIGenerator.com. It's my one of my favorite, actually. Uh, you can tell it to generate one or however many GUIDs you need. Uh, keep in mind, if you go and change, you can do it manually. Um, you can change the, uh, any of the numbers, and it'll just it'll ask you. Uh, so it'll be a come a new region because it's a unique uh, number. Just remember, you can only use the letters A to F. Okay, and they have to be lowercase. You can use one to nine um, for numbers. So just change a couple of these up if you don't want to use GUI Gen, um, if you're lazy. Uh, this is the location. So I want the sandbox to be close to the welcome region. Um, so uh, this this number here represents left to right. This one is up to down. So if I change this to four, it's going to go two squares above the welcome region. And that's fine with me. Uh, this is where you define the region size. So say I wanted to make that region a little bit bigger. Uh, you do so in multiples of two, five, six. Um, there is a limit. I believe it's eight thousand something uh, by eight thousand, whatever, um, which is crazily big. But yeah, this is the standard region size and what Second Life uses. So we're just going to leave that the same. Uh, this port needs to be changed to something unique because every region has to have a unique port. So we'll just put it there, and everything else can stay the same. So we'll save that. And that's as easy as you can set up a new region. Say some somebody went, wants a sim in your land, and you, and you say, okay, no problem. You just uh, make a copy of the master, go back in here like we just did, and make this whatever you want your region name to be. Okay, and just change. Make sure you change this to something unique. And this, you got to change the port. So now that we've done that, we're going to go in and um, you need to go to open sim any. I and I, um, and you need to change the network port. So uh, you can just either scroll to find network, or you can just put a little bracket and go net and push enter. It's going to take in network, and this is where you change this. You have, to, you have a unique one for every simulator you run. Now you don't have to change this for every region. So you can run like I can run like eight sandbox regions on this one simulator on the same port here. You just have to make sure that when you assign the eight regions in the regions.ini, which is where we just were, that uh, uh, you can just even cut and paste this down like this and add a new region in and just change the name, like call it Sandbox 2. Actually, we'll do this for show. Uh, let's change these two numbers. And we're going to put this one uh, two squares to the left of that one. Okay. And then we're going to change the port that it starts on. So we'll save that. So now we're going to have two regions being asked to start. Now let's say I want to use a different database uh, for um, uh, for my regions. I can go ahead and define that in uh, 
in the welcome here in, in grid commons you, you would just let so it's set to welcome center so let's say sandbox beta okay and now that we have that we're gonna have to go into MySQL here and we're gonna go and we're going to uh, create a new table called our new database called sandbox beta because uh, we need to have one there for it to use. Okay, so that's it. That's all you got to do. Um, if you're running it on the same server, there's another one step you got to do if you're going to change like to a different server. Uh, and if you want to use a different server, you have to go back into config include. And at the bottom of grid commons, there's three sets of line you have to change to the server you're running it on. Um, and as well as in the region, uh, uh, I and I, you have to point. Um, uh, this section right here to whatever the server you're running it on. So uh, in this case, we would change these three lines here. This one here, instead of constant base, because it'll pull the wrong one, you have to do. You would just replace this with the IP address um, and the and the port of of uh, the server that you're running the the region on. That's if you're if you like say you get really busy and you need another server. You order another one, you just have to change those three lines of code. Uh, uh, these two, and then there's another one here. But it even says, change this to your server accessible from other grids. So, I mean, it's really not hard to find those areas because it's they tell you where to do it. Um, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and make a shortcut from the OpenSim EXE on the desktop. Because we need to have one of those to run the region. So there it is there. Okay, so we're going to call this sandboxes. And we'll double click on it. Now it's going to ask me for some information here because um, there's no databases in the, that table. So we're going to create a database, or uh, sorry, an estate rather. I got to get my names right here. So we're going to create an estate and we're going to call this sandboxes. All right, and it's going to ask me who owns this. So the only user that we have in the grid at the time is test member. But let's say I want um, Joe Blow to own it. So we're going to create a new user. You can do this from the Wi-Fi page, or you do it from us. So Joe Blow, and uh, we're going to put his password, and we're going to just fire through that. So Joe Blow is now created. We're going to use Joe Blow, and now Joe Blow is going to be the owner of these. Now it's asking me about the second one. Do you wish to connect it to an estate? I'm just going to push enter and then it's already selected sandbox so I don't have to type it. Um, if you had multiple estates you would have to type which one you want to put it under. Hence why I like to split up the databases because if you start running lots and lots of regions and you start running different estates it can get real messy real quick. So anyways just push enter and that's going to set it up under that estate uh, and Joe Blow is going to be the owner. Okay, uh, so if we were to go log in, and let's say I want those regions flat, because right now they're a pimple, like an island, flat. They're not even flat. Uh, let, let, let me do that real quick. You can just type, and we're in root, you can see. Um, so whatever you type in here is going to change for every region on there. So if I want to do Pacific, I would just show region. Uh, and then I could go, okay, change region sandbox. And that will only edit the sandbox. But we want to change them both flats. So we're going to go change region root. So back to root. And we're going to go terrain fill 21, which is going to flatten out the entire lands to be a giant flat at 21 height. Water level is 20. So it will just be above water. And then we're going to take a look and see. Let's see what the time is here. So good. All right. So, like we set it up, um, we wanted uh, two boxes up and two boxes over. They still look like pimples uh, because we haven't restarted the region. So, uh, if we go there and look at them, we'll see that they're flat, but the map tiles show that they're not. So to fix that, that's either you can just wait. Uh, 
believe it's 600 minutes. Or you can just uh, restart the uh, region. So we're going to do that. We'll just click Q. And it's going to be like that. And we'll just restart it. And that's going to draw new map tiles for it. Which are just going to be flat because it's just square. But that is as simple as it is to load a secondary region or simulator on your grid.